Hello everyone and welcome to the last Konos Crash Course of the school year. Yeah, this is the last lecture, so that means no more videos after this until next school year. So, let's end it out with a bang and talk about the European Explorers for week 28. And just a heads up, this week doesn't really have a narrative, it's just a bunch of people and facts about them. So, stuff like Quizlet would really help this week, because basically you just need to know who the person is and what they did. They don't really have a role in the overarching story like most weeks. So, yeah, let's get started. Apparently this whole lecture ties back to the point Dr. T was apparently focusing on the entire school year, that we treat people according to how we see them. I mean, I guess that kind of was in the other lectures, but I didn't think that was the main theme, but okay, okay, we'll just go with that. So yeah, pay attention whenever that comes in. And also all these explorers were inspired by Mr. Marco Polo, who you probably remember from before. He was like the first explorer that inspired all these other explorers. And so the first on our list is Henry the Navigator. And whenever I say a name, you probably should just know it. I don't think all the names are important, but like, basically whenever I say a name in this episode, you probably should know it. So yeah, Henry the Navigator was Portuguese. He lived from 1394 to 1460. He taught a school about how to be an explorer. And Portugal is right next to Spain, by the way. So a lot of Portuguese and Spanish people were, yeah, really close to each other. So as you'll see here with our next guy, Ferdinand Magellan, he was a Portuguese sailor who sailed for Spain because, you know, the countries are right next to each other. So he just walked over and, you know, did stuff for them. He lived from 1480 to 1521. He was the first to circumnavigate the globe. However, he was shot by an arrow on the journey, so the crew finished it for him in 1522 and gave him the credit for it. Oh, how sweet. So Sir Francis Drake was the first person to circumnavigate the globe and actually survive the journey, but Magellan's trip did prove that the Earth was not flat. Ha! Take that, flat earthers! Also, he tried teaching the natives he encountered about Jesus. So yeah, that's good. Next is Vasco da Gama. He was a Portuguese sailor who lived from 1460 to 1524. He was the first European to sail around Africa to India through the Cape of Good Hope. And this is actually why Brazil speaks Portuguese because, well, Vasco da Gama went there. So, you ready for more explorers? Too bad, because it's time for a completely unrelated story. I love it when Dr. T puts those in. So at this point in time, basically all of Arabia is Muslim. Europe is not, since Charles Martel fought them off in 732 in the Battle of Tours. And whoa, that was way back, well, that was a long time ago, we actually had a lecture on that. So yeah, the Muslims engage in fights called jihads to convert nations to Islam, and non-Muslim people are called kafirs, uh, forgive me if I pronounced that incorrectly. And so 200 of these jihads took place in Spain, and 538 jihads have taken place over the course of 1,000 years, including modern times. And so, if you remember, there was a video in class to kind of like display that timeline of when all the jihads occurred, so yeah, just remember that. And so I guess the people in Spain were tired of these jihads, so King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain ended the jihads in 1491, and these two ruled together from Spain from 1474 to 1504. They forced the Muslims to either leave the country or to convert to Christianity, and the Muslims treated them brutally, so they are basically returning the favor with this. The Muslims have rules on really mean stuff you can do to kafirs without punishment, so yeah, I mean, after all that mean stuff, I don't blame these two for doing that to them. Ferdinand and Isabel also did the same thing to Jews in 1492, you know, giving them a chance to convert or leave. But Dr. T didn't mention why, so I'm assuming it's not important. So many of these people claimed to quote-unquote convert, but the king and queen really had no way of telling if they really did convert. So this begins the Spanish Inquisition, headed by Torquemonda. I hope I pronounced that right. So this method is basically torturing people to figure out if they are Christians. And Torquemonda was the Grand Inquisitor. He lived from 1451 to 1506, and he used very unsafe methods. So, yeah. Now enters the very controversial figure of modern times, Christopher Columbus. Dr. T loves talking about him. He lived from 1451 to 1506. And hey, that's, that's the same lifespan as Torquemonda. Are they the same person? Dun dun dun! He discovered the New World, and he was Italian, but he also sailed for Spain, so Spain liked hiring all the good sailors. His goal was to evangelize, explore, and get rich. 
He also brought along settlers to reside in the New World permanently, and their reward for staying was to own the land that they worked. And so Columbus started out as a nice guy. The Indians thought the Spanish were from heaven and they offered them expensive items for basically nothing, but Columbus made sure all the trades were fair, and he set up a system called the Conumienda. With this system, the Indians would work for these settlers in exchange for the settlers teaching them stuff like Christianity and the ways of the Spanish culture, which sounds good on paper, but the Spanish realized how much gold there was in the New World and how rich they could become, and this greed for gold seized them. The Economia system basically collapsed, and the settlers enslaved and mistreated the Indians. Eventually, they turned into conquistadores! And they were brutal to the Indians. They did stuff like chop their hands off, bet on who could slice one of them open, hang them with their toes barely touching the ground, and burn them alive! Guys, this is awful! But they carried the same brutality as the Muslims before them did, and they believed the Indians were savages and not really people. But they didn't care, because they were rich now, so I mean, they're rich! Oh, how wealth can corrupt a person. Then comes in Las Casas, who lived from 1484 to 1566, and Dr. T never mentioned this, but I thought it was funny. His name translates to the houses, like his name means the houses. What a weird name to give your kid. He was a priest in the New World who protected the Indians. He tried showing the Spanish authorities how brutal the conquistadors were, and he said that Christ didn't die for gold. But Spain never really knew what they were doing since there was a whole ocean separating them. They couldn't know for sure if Las Casas was telling the truth because the conquistadors denied all the accusations he made. Las Casas even wrote a book about it, and the conquistadors made sure the book was hidden and never read. And Spain never found out about all these atrocities until, well, it was too late. All the explorers that followed were also hungry for gold, it's a very recurring theme at this point. The first of these was Ponce de Leon, who was from 1460 to 1521. He discovered Florida, yay! And originally he was searching for gold and the found of youth he never found either. What a shame. And next is Herman Cortez from 1485 to 1547. He was a conquistador of the Aztec Empire, and Cortez heard rumors of a gold land and searched for it, driven by greed. And then he found the Aztecs, and boy were they loaded. There was gold everywhere! And they also had cocoa beans, which were new to Spain, so he brought some back. So, yay, coffee! Wait, cocoa beans are in coffee, right? I, don't, I really don't know. The chief of the Aztecs was Montezuma, and he met with Cortez and they had a big happy feast, and Montezuma honored him there, but later Cortez killed him and raided all the gold from the empire, and he used his cannons to destroy everything. So the Aztecs were wiped out and Cortez found his gold, not really a happy ending, but hey, it's just history. Next is Francisco Pizarro, who lived from 1478 to 1541. He was a conquistador who traveled to South America, and he ended up in Peru and found the Inca Empire. The Incas had just finished a war when Pizarro arrived, so they were in a pretty relaxed state. I mean, they just won a war, they're probably chilling. Plus, they had more warriors than Pizarro, I think they had around 30,000, so if conflict did break out, they'd probably win. And then they had a feast to celebrate their arrival, but Pizarro was hiding behind a wall. Sneaky boy. Then the Spanish priest approached the Inca chief with the Bible and told him to convert! And the chief said no. I mean, the priest literally walked up to this guy and said, Hey, I just met you, uh, and this is crazy, but here's a Bible, so make it your new religion. <laughs> what in the world? So yeah, this guy hadn't even read the book before, so I understand the chief's answer, but Pizarro didn't like it, so he came out with a cannon and began killing everyone. The chief was arrested and held in trial, and to make sure the trial wasn't biased, they had Pizarro be the judge. Wow, great call, guys. He was declared guilty, but was shown compassion by allowing him to choose whether he wanted to be burnt or strangled to death. The chief begged to be spared and offered his silver and gold as a ransom, and this got Pizarro listening. You see, the Incas mainly had silver, but they also had gold, and I mean, silver's pretty good too, so hey, why not? They took this ransom, but then they killed him afterwards. <sighs> and then the Inca Empire was gone, and Pizarro was rich. Yay. Helping Pizarro conquer the Incas was Hernando de Soto. He lived from 1500 to 1541, and he had a huge take of the profits from them conquering the Incas. He got 18,000 ounces of gold! I don't even know how much that is, but he was rich at this point! But this wasn't enough for him, so he led his own expedition into the New World to find more gold. He was even more brutal than Pizarro. He killed many people as he explored North America. He found the Mississippi River. That's cool. 
but he died in Louisiana due to fever, and he didn't find any gold, so he deemed himself a failure. He was buried in the Mississippi River. And now for another explorer named Francisco de Coronado. He lived from 1510 to 1554. He looked for gold, but didn't find any. He explored North America, specifically the regions of Texas, Arizona, and Mexico. He had a group of Indians guide them, and I guess he didn't kill them along the way, so yeah, good for him. He discovered the Grand Canyon and traveled down the Colorado River. The final explorer is Vasco de Balboa. He lived from 1475 to 1519. He looked for gold, but didn't find any, just like the last guy. But he did find the Pacific Ocean, which is kind of cool, I guess, but he didn't have any gold, so what's the point? He actually got to name it, too. I, I wonder how he thought of the name Pacific. That's kind of a weird name, but okay. But his crew got jealous and rebelled against him, and they held a totally unbiased trailer and had him beheaded on false charges. Okay, that's all the explorers. Oh, that was a lot, but we're not done yet. Now we get to talk about some of the ships they used. First up are caravels, which were small ships with a 250 ton displacement. They were made to move quick, because you gotta go fast! Yes, I got a Sonic reference in the last episode for the school year. Next were the Caracs, with a 1,000 ton displacement. They were made for carrying gold. But the largest ships were the Galleons, just like last week. They were made for cargo slash troop transport. But none of these ships compare to the treasure ships of Zhang He, who's the last word on the board for the school year. No ships could compare to the size of his treasure ships. He dominated the Indian Ocean, but he didn't budget well, and he overspent. And all of China went broke as a result of this overspending. So I guess, I think China made these ships. I think Zhang He was just like the sailor dude. So And they had no printing press, so they just couldn't print more money. And no ships were bigger than Zhang He's treasure ships until ships built for World War I, which was like 500 years later. So that kind of shows you how big these ships were. So, that is the end. Last lecture of the year. After this, we just study for the final, and if you want to study the old Crash Course videos for that, go ahead. I'm not making a new video for it, though. I know some of you guys want to be to, like, animate the final or something, but no, no, I'm not doing that. That would be way too much. So yeah, if that's all the lecture stuff, if you're in a hurry to go, you can just stop the video here. But I wanted to end the video with a big thank you to everyone who's watched these videos throughout the entire year. Without your support, these probably would have ended months ago. I always get people telling me how much they love the videos and it really encourages me. The whole point of these videos were to help you guys out and it looks like they did, which means mission accomplished, I guess. So... And let me tell you, I did not expect this series to blow up like it did. It just started by me reading my notes to a study group with my friends, and they suggested I make a series out of it like this. I didn't think it would work, but here we are. I'm sitting in front of a microphone recording this for you guys. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So... Yeah, it's time to give a big shout out to everyone who has helped me make these videos. First off, Alex Strickland, who's edited this video and the last one. So sorry you only got to work on two videos this year. If you like, you can be my editor next year too. I think it worked out great. Everyone who I've asked about it has said you did an amazing job. So yes. Also, thanks to my pal Carson, who's basically been my fact checker. Whenever I didn't know something about the lecture, I'd just ask him and he'd give me an answer. And then also thanks to his sister Callie for actually giving me the name Konos Crash Course. This was not my idea. I probably would have given this series some really stupid name. So yeah, thank you for giving me a not stupid name. And also for Ben Province, because he made the cover art. I've been using it every single video except for that cringy first one. That that was me. And then he's also been a big motivator for the series and he also helped set up the Instagram account for this channel and he actually ran it for a while too. And finally, thanks to all of you for watching and supporting for this entire year. These will definitely be continuing next year unless something happens. I plan on doing these week one next year. If I forget, please tell me because yeah, I really want to do these. So yeah, that's the end of the video and I'll see you guys next school year.